Hello guys, thank you so much for coming back to watch another video on my channel. Resident Evil 9 is currently in development and hopefully we'll see some sort of announcement this year. However, what camera angles can we expect to see from that game? Is it going to be first person just like Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 was? Or is it going to follow the trend of the most recent remakes we've seen from the Resident Evil franchise? So, without wasting any time, let's find out together in this video. And as always, do make sure to watch the whole video and if you do end up liking the video, do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It allows me to make more of this content for you guys. Camera angles play a crucial part in building tension and enhancing the horror experience for a horror game. It can manipulate how the players perceive the environment with the characters on the screen. A game designer uses this freedom and its advantage by choosing the specific angles to emphasize certain aspects of a scene in order to create a bleak moody atmosphere and make players feel uneasy throughout that scene. That's why each camera angles are crucial when we are looking at horror games, ranging from fixed camera, third person over the shoulder or first person camera perspective. We simply cannot just prioritize a certain display of vision over the other as each of these camera styles utilizes its strengths to represent the artistic nature of a good horror game. Fixed camera angles uses camera trickery to heighten fear and create uneasiness for the players. For example, the use of fog in Silent Hill games. And same applies to early Resident Evil titles. When you see a sudden shift of a camera as soon as you've entered a new room, it was all intentional by the game developers. This partial view of your surrounding limits your field of vision leaving players uncertain about what lies ahead and create this fear of unknown. Then third person over the shoulder places the camera directly behind your main protagonist, creating a sense of proximity of space and place of the game world. This camera angles create the limitation in line with your main protagonist as you feel the same vulnerability as your main character. It also opens the door for a more strategic gameplay and it always has this horror movie feel to it which always reminded me of Alfred Hitchcock movies. Lastly, a first person view allows players to immerse themselves in the game world by creating this false sense of presence. It feels like you can see through the eyes of the protagonist. It feels like you are the one facing the horror in this limited view while you're fully immersed in the atmosphere of the game. The confined view of the first person camera enhances the atmospheric tension. Dark corridors, flickering lights and eerie sounds become more unsettling when you experience them directly. If you remember a scene in Resident Evil 7 in the main house, just looking at that basement door was enough to create this fear without showing anything on the screen which shows you how effective this camera style can be if you used it properly rather than relying on cheap jump scares. The Resident Evil franchise has utilized all of these camera angles as a tool to demonstrate a natural evolution of this franchise. Each camera angle define its type. For example, tank controls or fixed camera angles represented an era of early Resident Evil titles where backtracking and survival horror was the priority. Resident Evil 4 revolutionized the over-the-shoulder third-person camera angle and hence introduced us to a new generation and evolution of this franchise. This camera provided more B-movie style to the franchise and continued a fast-paced gameplay which carried on until Resident Evil 6. Then Capcom did another shakeup for this brand and created a soft reboot with Resident Evil 7, which was homage to the earlier Resident Evil days where backtracking and survival horror elements was the key. But at the same time, it injected a new flavour by creating a more immersion in the atmosphere of the game world through this first person camera perspective. Believe it or not, Capcom originally wanted the first Resident Evil game to be first person inspired by Sweet Home. However, due to technical limitation, they stick with the fixed camera angles. Now, early response on Resident Evil 7 was received with a backlash on game being first person and people wanted to feel the same way as they did with Leon and 
Chris. However, not seeing your protagonist put some people off early on with the game as they didn't feel the connection with the main protagonist. Now being the first person Resident Evil title, the aim of the game was the immersion of the atmosphere by creating a found footage style rather than a blockbuster movie style they have done with the previous Resident Evil game. This is why PSVR was promoted along with Resident Evil 7 to fully create this immersion in that game. But saying that, Capcom took the feedback on board and released remakes of the early Resident Evil titles starting with the Resident Evil 2 remake to third person over the shoulder style instead of fixed or first person camera perspective. However, keeping the same theme of survival horror and backtracking which is what this franchise is known for. This continued all the way to Resident Evil 4 Remake and mainline Resident Evil games continued to be on the first person camera perspective. However, Capcom recently done an experiment with Resident Evil Village post launch content by giving us the option to play the game on either first person or third person camera perspective. Now that is an interesting idea which they have given in Resident Evil Village, that you have the option to play either on third person or first person camera perspective. Granted, the third person camera angle wasn't the best in this game, but it still shows us the possibility that this can be done in the future Resident Evil titles. Which brings us to Resident Evil 9. Now we know that we won't be seeing Ethan Winters as a returning main character for Resident Evil 9, and we either will be seeing a brand new protagonist or a returning character from the previous Resident Evil games like Chris Redfield. Which means Capcom will be looking at what camera perspective now to be used for Resident Evil 9, as the first person camera perspective in the previous Resident Evil games was in line with Ethan Winters' storyline. Now personally, I want them to do a culmination of all of these camera perspectives by providing the option from get-go to either play a first-person fixed camera angle or third-person over the shoulder. It's not an impossible thing to do that anymore with today's technology. Even this concept was also applied to Evil Within 2 where developers allow the gamers to experiment with first person camera angle. If you ask me, I personally really enjoyed and fully immersed with the first person camera angle we've seen in Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 Village. But saying that, I also loved and felt fully immersed with Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, provide this option from the very start would be a clever idea because it will create more replayability of this game and it will please all the Resident Evil fans who has joined this franchise with the different eras. Secondly, this game is rumoured to have the highest budget out of the franchise. It's quite possible to provide this option to the gamers. However, I do believe that they might shift to third person over the shoulder camera perspective for Resident Evil 9 as it has been quite successful for them with the recent remakes and also Resident Evil Village DLC Shadow of Rose also follow the same third person camera perspective rather than following the main game's first person camera angle. Whichever camera angle Capcom decided to go, I do want them to stick to survival horror rather than adapting to action horror because all of these camera styles can easily fit in and will work as long as the game follows the basic formula which is what this franchise is known for. So what do you guys think? Which camera angle do you think Capcom will use in Resident Evil 9 and which one do you prefer? Please do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below in this video. And that's it for the video guys, I'll catch you again with another video on my channel. Until then, look after yourself, have a good one.